Well, welcome back, everybody. It's a change of season. Kids are back in school, heading into fall. If you're a mom, this is your time. This is your time to shine, especially since the little ones or the semi-little ones now, depending on their age, are back in school. If you've been thinking about getting back into the workforce or really upping your game, maybe you're there, you kind of dedicate some time to your kids as you should, but you know you're not feeling fully fulfilled in terms of your purpose and your career. Got somebody that's going to help you out with that. And she looks at it from both sides. She works with businesses to look at their untapped potential, but she also looks at the talent. And yes, mom, you have talents. Let's use your talents and move you forward. She's Candace Friedenberg. She's with us today and she's our professional of the year. How are you doing today? I'm well. Uh, glad to be here, Steve. Thanks for having me. And your business is truly called Untapped Potential. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Untapped Potential Incorporated. And our tagline is Advancing Business and Reigniting Careers. Mm, today we're reigniting the career, but it's funny. If you look at it on the back end, we're advancing business because once we get those people in those positions, you know, it either works this way or it works that way. So looking at moms, what do you truly hear nowadays, Candace? What what's kind of the common denominator uh from 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 those women? Um, the things we hear often are I don't know where I fit today in today's workplace or how to get back to where I was. And often they were up here. They were in New York City, had a $300,000 salary, moved out of the city with their spouse and were the trailing spouse. And now they don't know where to come back in. And that's something we work uh, really well with the, the uh, clients to educate the the, them on that caliber of this uh, talent and the potential of this talent. Um, and really, um, moms also say, you know, I um, I stayed in the game. I've seen all, all my peers be promoted. I couldn't raise my hand for the stretch assignment. I couldn't raise my hand for the high visibility role because the sh other shoe might drop. One kid was sick. The next one has surgery, you know, just different things that have kept women from using their confidence that they actually have and delivering for their full potential because they had these responsibilities. So now they see that their peers have all been promoted and they really need to rebrand themselves with their current employer or look outside the box and network to their potential and on top potential helps with that as well. So let's, let's go chronologically and start with those women, those moms of younger kids where it's not as easy, it's easier than it was when they were babies or infants. Now they're a little bit older. Maybe they just started school or they can do some daycare somewhere in that territory. And then we'll get to the older situation in a moment. But how, how do they walk that delicate balance between I want to get back to work. I know I have much more to offer, but I, you know, have one hand on the kids, even though they're in school or wherever. Right. It's it's twofold. And really, um, when we came to market, we focused on that problem. What's preventing this brain power from coming back to corporate America, adding to our GDP, G, GP, what a, a GDP is what I wanted, <laughs> adding to that so they can add to the economy. And often it is they can't say, OK, uh, to their kids, I'm out the door. I'm not, I'm going 40 hours a week. It's hard to go from zero to a hundred percent. So we crafted a, a trademark flex return that lets them rejoin the workplace in a flexible way. It lets them accumulate new, new technology in a, in a, um, acclimated way and really see where they fit, figure out where they fit answering that, that biggest problem. I don't know where I fit, um, in the workplace. And we do it by, uh, representing their talent, their skills, and what they can bring to market to those clients and make sure that client is understanding they're not doing nothing today. They're, you know, six to 8 a.m. is packed and they can't be getting ready to get out the door themselves. And then 2.30 on, they might be, um, you know, logistically juggling multiple kids from multiple families because they've been the go-to for the pickup. They need to shave those responsibilities off Often they're volunteering in the schools and delivering 
you know, fundraising activities for nonprofits and their power figures in those roles. They need a glide path to start converting those skills to professional potential. And so we we do work with them in finding out what logistically can they do today and have them map that out. And if they could do nine to two, we work with them to find clients that benefit with their skill from nine to two. And some do raise their hand saying, I'm ready to go full time. I can go full time. My kids are independent, but I'm not getting the visibility on the job board system. And that's another thing we help help candidates with. Ooh, yeah, that uh, you never want to feel like you you faded away. You know, I'm, <laughs> it's like your mom. I'm here. I'm still here. I'm just a little busy right now. But now they're they're a little bit older. Um, let's look at my COVID brought us lots of challenges, but also some <laughs> positive things in that we have Zoom. We're here today. We can work right. remotely. Is that a very viable option when you're a mom in the workplace? And where I'm going with this is, uh, is, is it still strong and is it still growing uh, in terms of supporting that demographic? Yeah, it, it's interesting because um, COVID brought a bunch of things to us. And um, one was um, the the advancement of adopting adapting technology that was already there. I had worked remotely, you know, earlier in, in technology roles. And this demographic, though, wasn't keen on interfacing by Zoom while their kids are in the background. You know, they really were like, let me put my professional self on, let me interact with adults, put time bounds around it, and I'll be a superstar there and get a pat on the back, and then I'll come home and be focused focused on family. So they weren't seeking that out in the years that we operated pre-COVID. It really wasn't a, um, even though I knew it was feasible, it wasn't something that we sought after. Um, now, really, it can, the fact that hybrid roles are available, um, you can better find your niche where a company might want you, but you can't logistically get there. And that was one of the other hard problems. Often these women are high caliber and the right job for them exists. It's just in Texas and they can't pick up their family and move. But now with hybrid and those kind of things, they can find that slice that matches their skill set and maybe has some remote and flexibility. Um, but the key thing is, I believe that the way companies have gone to hybrid and, and remote is still possibility at some firms, um, it can let women return earlier. They can see, logistically, I can make it fit. I don't have the, the travel two days a week, so I can pour it on the other three, and my spouse or other neighbors can help me with the logistics so they can do longer hours and make it happen, and then they know they can take a breather and don't have that logistics on those other two days. So I'm going to ask this based on some women I know I'm connected to. What if you were in a career and you've done it, maybe you've taken a little short pause and you're just thinking, that's not for me anymore. There's something else out there. I'm not really sure what it is, but I know there's something else out there. Can you support and where, where do you go? What's a, like, some of the starting points there? That is such a, a great question, Steve, because really the first aspect when we meet with women is kind of rediscovering who they are now and how do they uh, want to bring their best self to the workplace. We do believe that women learn a lot about their personalities and um, through the years have grown other skill sets. And often they do look back at that other role and say, you know, I slid into that. I was 18 when I chose it and then I was mm -hmm. good at it. So I stayed at it, but it wasn't really me. And now they have more um, confidence in what they are good at. And we explore those in, in a couple different ways. One that exploratory asking questions. Um, really we ask, um, you know, when in your, adult life, you know, what, what would you do if you didn't need to get paid? You know, what is that go-to thing? Maybe it's something completely different than what your skills say you're good at. And we always want their elevator pitch to be, to be their, their aspirational goals, not, not what they did for seven years before they had kids, but what are their, is their go-to market strategy. But the key thing we also do is expose them to really cool careers 
that are available today that didn't exist before. And we ask them to explore these different paths. And we also skill them up in technologies that companies are telling us if we had 20 of these, if we had more of these, we'd hire all of them. And they might be something they might not have viewed themselves as. And it's very typical for our moms of our you know, after, after having kids and being out for five to 10 years to not see themselves as technologists, not, not to see themselves as digital anything. Um, but those are the jobs that are available. So we do skilling up in tech 101. We skill up in data analytics. We skill up in cybersecurity. And you'd be surprised how those fields have transferable skills. And one that we really like is um, agile and scrum management because because it is so aligned with some of the skills they gleaned as a parent. And it's a very comfortable role for a lot of moms. So we ask them to explore these paths before they decide even to go back with to what they were going to do or they thought they'd do and explore new things. Wow. Um, I'm not looking for a new career. I'm excited. <laughs> Seriously. It just sounds like, especially getting back into the game, uh, what program – would that be called if it's somebody, let's say it's somebody who wants to find another career. They just know this, this one's not working over here. What, what, what program would that be? Well, we have this, we have these different personas and one is transition Terry. So someone that just wants to transition and explore new fields, often they come to us as a mentor. They're in the game and they are mentoring, hearing the elevator pitch of our moms that um, haven't practiced it for a while and being that benevolent listener. Um, but then they're also connecting with other mentors, connecting with um, our client companies and learning through our skill up programs. Um, often they are for people that just want to future proof their career. They want to make sure their skills are sharp and they're learning the latest and greatest. And um, then when we meet with clients, we we ask them to measure our candidates by their skills and their experience and not discount them for caregiving. And then we often have, um, you know, clients that say, well, I have this full-time role. Do you have anyone with this? I have this, you know, role. I can craft a flex return that is a project-based role in this niche that your candidate's really good at, but we have these other roles. And so we're able to connect people really to pivot to their potential um, based on our work all year long, really getting to know our clients' businesses, what is their challenges, what could help them gain foothold in the marketplace, um, and how could these great skills that are coming to us in transition, in getting back to work, or e even downsizing, you know, if they are at the peak of their career and they're still traveling internationally and they are up for the next promotion and they're really saying, I can't keep this engine going. I really want time with my kids when they're two, four, and six. And I don't want to farm out my most important job. And I got here. I can get here again. And we help them downsize to, you know, work at our some of our forward-thinking companies that understand the value of their skills and offer some of that flexibility and hybrid nature. For you, Candace, how, how did this journey work for you? where you're helping other women and not just women, but you know, we're talking about women today. Uh, how did it begin for you? How did it begin? Interesting. Um, well, I, um, fundamentally I'm an engineer, so I worked in the workplace and I am one of my demographic. Um, but really I was looking at another problem when I s thought of this and the problem was more, infant brain development and things of that nature. And while I was looking at that problem, I ended up going to a women's event where there was just this high caliber women that were making things happen, PTO moms, things of that nature. And they all were complaining a little bit about how they can't fit in society. They can't go back to what they were. They used to be this. And then there were even other moms on the other end that were in their power career and travel for four months out of the year and say, I feel like if I leave this brand name company, mm -hmm. there'll be nothing for me. It's all or nothing. And I actually, what clicked for me and I came home on fire was reflecting on my MBA education. And when I was in an economics class and they said, you know, the business cycles, 
different philosophies around um, what drives the business cycles. And often it's the inability to um, convert talent to the next great growth area, like cybersecurity or data analytics and um, or oil when we have a glut of MBAs and they just don't fit. You can't train them to that. And I thought, here's this human capital. We fought so long for women to have degrees, to have an education, to be able to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, program manager. And now we're saying, OK, once you raise your kids, you're just done. And what I realized is there's, you know, 20, 30, 40 years left you know, depending on when they opted out, where they could be adding value to our economy. So I really um, started thinking of this first as a nonprofit, and then I got exposed to uh, Hartford's um, Reset Social Enterprise Trust, and they um, really educated me on uh, the Benefit Corp and Social Enterprise. And so Untapped Potential is a Connecticut-based Benefit Corp. Wow. I didn't know you were in, I just realized <laughs> that you're in Connecticut on your website. I saw the word Hartford. I'm like, got to be Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a funny side note. I'm familiar with Connecticut only because I grew up listening to Connecticut radio stations. So uh -huh. all of the places in Connecticut, you know, Hartford, um, Gary Craig, 96.5 TIC. Yep. I don't know if you're a good friend of mine. You know, he's since yep. retired down in Florida. Yep. <laughs> uh, he and I used to share ideas all the time behind the scenes. So, um, yeah, I'm familiar. Didn't know you were that close. So, Great. Um, fascinating how you your, your journey got you to where you are, but there's nobody I know or even heard of that does what you do to support women. And again, it's not just about women, but that's what we're focusing on today. Yeah, no, a good point. We've always had um, each, we work in semesters. And so this is our kickoff for our fall semester. And we've always had one male that was to follow the same path. His wife was the power career. He did substitute teaching, yet he was a engineer prior and getting, you know, that back. And then, you know, people even have traveled from New York to our Hartford events wow, and got job offers at our events. So pre-COVID, we had live um, client candidate speed interviews. They really work well virtually and can attract people from various geographies, especially with remote work. But we had, uh, 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 we always have one in that cycle and, and there should be more. And I truly believe there should be more because we really need to normalize that caregiving is, and I think the next generation is going to do better at it, that it's equally men and women that are diving mm -hmm. into the pickup and do that kind of thing. And until we get there, I truly believe we cannot have equality in senior roles because really women are facing a double competition. Not only are they against men when they stay in the workplace, but they're also competing with someone that often has someone at home doing all the mind share, home care, caregiving, yeah. and they can't pour it on during those years. It's truly really an un unfair situation. The scale is definitely tipped, you know, for, for somebody that a mom that's taking care of her kids and working, but also wants to contribute and move forward with her career and also help the company as well. Um, you mentioned mentor and I see you have a mentor matching program. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. Well, um, we encourage mentors to support on top potential. And really it's a big fabric of our support. And mentors are simply those in the game. They don't have to be a mom. They can be a, a male, female. They also can be someone just out of college. We have mentors from that are just, you know, in their third year out of college, but they are in the game and they uh, attend our events. Often our mentor mingle events have a um, speaker that attracts both, you know, it could be around growing confidence in the workplace or how to um, navigate your career d pivots, pivoting in your career, things of that nature. And so they might find it valuable as well, but they participate to be that benevolent listener to um, align with finance and finance. You know, we're not experts in every field, but we know who to connect people to. And so they can review the the profile we use you know, online documents and they can edit it and they can say, no, you don't want to use this terminology. That's old. Mm. And this is how you say it now and get that support. Um, and so we do um, encourage candidates to sign up in our programmatic um, 
processes and then they get a mentor that they're matched to that they can go to. And often when they start a flex return, both clients and candidates find it very valuable that there's an external mentor that they the candidate often has a host mentor in the company that's hosting them in this flex return engagement, but they might not want to go to them and say, they're using SharePoint and I never heard of SharePoint. And then we get a mentor that's an expert in SharePoint or someone that knows how they might use it in the industry and have, have them have a half hour call with them the night before they have to go back into work the next day. So it's really a just in time, you know, someone that can support them so they don't um, sabotage themselves and not ask the right questions that they really need answered. I love that. And technology moving so fast that you got to stay on top of it. And what I love about the mentoring program, it seems like there's no judgment. You know, every question is a good question. Some right. of us may, you're not going to go into work and say, uh, yeah, the SharePoint thing, it, you want me to, I have no idea what that is. No, you can ask somebody on the back end and feel comfortable, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and also they might be questions about, you know, logistics, like with their family or kids. And then we have a slew of experts that can help yeah. them navigate that scenario as well, where it might not be the appropriate thing to bring into the workplace and they could find other solutions. And that's a, a way we support them as well. I love how you look at this from all angles. And I have to think that that's your, that's the tech side of you. I just <laughs> yep. I have a feeling that that's there where you, you, you got all bases covered, whether it's the talent, whether it's the company, whether it's a mentor, all of that. It's, it's, you know, 360 approach to finding somebody's untapped potential. That's what I'm detecting here. Yeah. And I think that um, we believe that truly the candidate brings skills that some company will value. Maybe it's not the the tech place they were at 10 years ago. Maybe it's not the company that required them to travel to Africa for different things. And, and a lot of women have in their mindset, I can't go back to what I used to do. And then they don't do anything else. Right. And what we try to open to their minds is you can gain skills. It's going to be a crawl, walk, run to get there. And you can pivot to something new and you can um, take advantage of technology and how it's shifted and it can help you work more efficiently. We did an AI in the office. You can get things done more, more efficiently and um, how you could be a leader in other environments. You just have to find the right one. Um, so I think that it, it, we also put the perspective of it, talking about three, three, 360 degrees, we put the perspective of you should be so glad and um, proud and happy that you were able to fulfill what you did for your family. Um, and yes, you might feel behind or that you don't have a network. More so it is that um, you are... Um, adding such value to society by staying home, there's a shortage of daycare. You're fulfilling another need that people don't talk about because it's not paid. It, this feels so supportive. Got to tell you, um, Candace, how does somebody connect with you? If they're a woman that just is getting back into the workplace or kids are finally, things have stabilized over there and they want to really kick it in, in terms of their career. How do they find you? Um, we are at, upotential.org. It's the letter U, potential.org. And you can find us there. Our events page has something going on once a week. Um, we have a big event once a month. And then twice a year, we have our client candidate speed interview events. And those are coming up in October and they are industry focused. So you kind of look at what industry verticals you might be interested in and clients in those industries will be attending and you would share your skills. Wow. It, can that also be done virtually? It is all done virtually. That is done virtually and it is all done virtually. We used to do it live one night and had all the different industry skills. During COVID, we went virtually, of course, um, but we also decided, you know, people aren't going to stay on Zoom for two and a half hours. So we broke it into, you know, healthcare, biotech and pharma, 
engineering disciplines like um, manufacturing, aerospace, and clean technology, and um, then IT, data analytics, cyber, digital marketing. Another day is more the, what we call And we're, we're starting to lose you. I think it's a Wi-Fi connection. I don't know if you can still hear. Um, it's it's sputtering. We got everything in. <laughs> I feel like it was toward the end there. Uh, I want to remind everybody, the place to go to is upotential.org. Upotential.org. It's a brand new season, and that's the reason to check it out and change your life, change your career. Uh, Candace, thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.